I'm going to show you how to make a collapse conjecture program in Python. It takes a number as input and it returns the stopping time, the peak and the steps in the conjecture as output. For those of you who do not know about the collapse conjecture, it says that when you have an even number divided by 2 and when you have an odd number, you multiply by 3 and add 1. Now, the thing is, the sequence will always get down to the number 1 and it will end in a loop of 4, 2, 1. Let's get started. So first things first, I'm going to make a function which tests if a number is even or not. So I'm going to draw it is even and I'm going to put a number. And I'm just going to let this function return whether the remainder when the number is divisible by 2 is equal to 0. It means that there is no remainder. Now let us run the file. Now, let us just start by printing out is even of an even number. It should say true. And if we do it to an odd number, now it should say false. Yes, it does. The next thing we need to do is we need to make a function which follows the collapse conjecture rules. Before that, we're going to make an alias for the function is even. Let's just call this function collapse rules. Let's put a number. Now, if the number is even, you divide the number by two. So if the number is even, like this, the number is even, then divide the number by two and save it to itself. Otherwise, if it is not even, then multiply the number by three and add one. And let's just say rules num rules equals let's rules the next thing we need to do is we need to test this new function so let's print out rules 5 and it should print out the number 16 I didn't return at the end of the function please be sure to return the number and now it should say 16 Now, we want to continue on with this behavior. So now, what I do is we want to make a collapse stop time function. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the stop time. And this is starting to be equal to zero. Now, what I do, I'm going to say while num. And this is equal to one. Our while num is not equal to 1, then I just apply the rules to num and also increase the stopping time by 1. And at the end, uh, this stopping time is the exclusive, exclusive stopping time. We want the inclusive stopping time. So we do return stop plus 1. And now when we print, let's just type stop is equal to collapse stop time and now let's print out stop 5 and now let's just see what happens so I found the answer over here I should say num is equal to rules num that is because we are getting stuck in an infinite loop because the number will not be equal to 1 the stopping time for 5 is 5 and the inclusive stopping time for 5 will be 6. I'm going to add that later on. Let's just do the stopping time for 27 which is the biggest stopping time I've seen so far. 111. Let's just put some big numbers. And this is more than 111. Yes, 280 stopping time. 
and this says add some more numbers and now it should be able to stop in time. So it's 174 steps. So it looks like our stopping time function is working. Now we actually want to print out the actual numbers, the actual steps. So we do a function called dollar steps. And this contains a number and let's start with the steps. There's an empty an empty list. Now we are going to iterate. We are not going to iterate. The iteration will be um, later on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with num inside the steps and now let's just do while num is I just going to start with the empty or num and now let's see while the num is not equal to 1 then num is equal to rules of num and now steps dot append num now at the end just return steps and we're going to do steps is equal to products steps and now we run steps 25 and this should be a y yes 25 96 38 19 58 29 88 44 2011 and so on down to one this this is the stopping time now I want to find out what the peak is, which is the highest number. So, for example, the peak for 25 will be 88, because it's the biggest number. So this is what I do. Let's just put in the number in here. And now we we'll just do LSN, just the list number. And this is just going to be steps of number. Or rather, STPN. Just going to be the steps of the number. Now we print. Now we iterate over STPN for I and STPN, which is the stop, which is the steps of the number. This for I and STPN, for this number in STPN. What we're going to do is we're actually going to start by making another peak variable. Just start by making it equal to zero. Now if i is greater than peak peak is equal to i otherwise the peak just remains the standard and at the end of the day return peak now let's just do the alias of peak is equal to call that peak and now let's do fn f5 and let's print out peak of 25 We have 88 and that's good now the peak of 16 will just be the same number 16 that is because it is its own peak over here now let's try 273 let's try and see its peak and it's 820 so that's what the peak is now let's just do the colored peak position which is the position of the peak inclusive of the number and now what we are going to do is we are going to do stpn it equal the steps num pk is equal to peak num uh, pkp is equal to stpn dot index pk and the and we return pkp and we're just going to do pkp is equal to colors position now we're going to try and find pkp of 273 and it should be like i think it's going to be just two or one this is not the inclusive just add one. I'm going to add one up. Now let's just print out. Welcome to Collards. Now this is going to be the starting point. Now we're going to make the number, and this is int. In put enter a number here. 
And now if you do this, we say num is equal to, now we have the number num. Now we want to check whether num is not equal to 1. So whether num is not equal to 1, or if num is equal to 1, then we're just going to print your number is 1. And it just terminates the program. Otherwise, no, number dates. Your number dates percent D steps to go to 1. And we're going to do the percent stop. Now, let's just see if this works. And our number here is 7. Your number takes 16 steps to go. That's good. Now, we're going to print out the steps in each detail. The steps. We're going to add 1 here. Now, what about the steps? But we need the LSN for that. In order to get the LSN, what we're going to do is let us put to say LSN or num or STPN is going to just be steps. Num. That is what STPN is going to be. And now PJ is equal to P num. If we take P, it's equal to PJ P num. Now we don't want to use the same, we'll just do P to P. Now the steps now we're going to iterate through every element of SDPN and we're just going to print that element out. The next step we are going to do is we are going to do print and we're going to do the peak percent D and it's just going to be PK plus one. Uh, pk plus one. We're going to add one to the peak position. Put the position of the peak. And this is also percent d. And percent pk plus one. And that's it. It works. Completely works. If the num is not defined, you might get an error, and that is just because to move it down here and the program now completely works and now here 27 it takes 112 steps and it completely now peak p and it completely works it has 27 i print at all 112 steps it says the peak is 932 and it even does the position of the peak if you want the peak is right here 932 and now I will see you next time. Bye.